everyone. If you play online or trying to play in a tournament in your club, you have to be good at the end game. Luckily, I have here the chess and latte guide to end game so that you can win more points without spending days or months studying end game books. So the first technique we need to go today is how to checkmate with bishop and knight against the black king. So first you bring a bishop into the picture and now you do 9c6. And this is a beautiful stuff because the knight covers these two squares and that bishop covers all these squares. So let me make that very clear. What does that mean? That means that the black king, unfortunately for him, can only go in this space. So you manage in two moves to restrict the black king and then your white king is gonna come join the fun. Let me just show that. That's a very powerful technique. And now you can see that black has to wait. And then little by little, you bring the king to the corner. Now, the black king here is trying to go to h8. Why is that? You can't checkmate the king here because you have a light square bishop. So your goal with white is to bring the black king on a8 because then these two pieces can checkmate on a8. So how do we do that? First step, we do bishop h7, we control g8, so the king comes here. And one of the key is that king's gonna come all the way to a8, and that's where you're gonna checkmate on the left side corner. So now the next thing is knight e5. And knight e5 is what we call the W maneuver. So we were on f7, went to e5, and then we're gonna do this W. So if you look at that, that's exactly the W maneuver. So let me just showcase that. We give a check. Now, very important, we follow the king. That's what we call opposition in chess. And now we follow the king. The king's trying to run desperately to the wrong corner. We give a check. And now, beautiful stuff. A waiting move over here. That means that because the king cannot come here, he's still marching toward the top left center. And now remember the knight came here, W, we have to finish the W. So we do knight c5, the king moves, we give a check, and now we follow the king. So the king are facing each other, and the end is near. We follow the king, and the king's trying to avoid the corner, and now we are ready for the kill because we are covering c8, the king has to go to a8, and we give another waiting move. The king is moving between uh, a8 and b8, and now simply check. The king has only one square, and we finish with a beautiful checkmate. So very important, first we were restricting the king, then the king was trying to move all the way to the wrong corner, and eventually, we move back the king to the light square corner and we're ready for the checkmate over here. So very nice technique. Remember this pattern at the end. Let's move on to different end games now. And this is another classic position, rook and bishop versus rook should be a draw. But in this position, black messed up. This is why to play and you win. You give a check, only move, then you keep your rook on the 7th rank. The best defense is to come to e2. So here you do another waiting move, and all of a sudden you're trying to have checkmate. So if the rook were to move over here, you have checkmate on g8. So black waits, and now you go on the left side trying to give a checkmate. So black is trying to defend, and trying to not have checkmate, and now you do bishop b3. The idea of this move is the bishop on d3 covers d1, so your king on d6 is safe. Rook c3, black wants to give a check, but now you give 
not this move, but you do bishop e6, and you're trying to come to b8 and do checkmate. So black is a check. Now we do bishop d5. You cannot the same at the beginning, but in the beginning, if you remember, the rook was on the second rank. Now it is on the third rank. So the black has to wait. You give a check. Now on king e8, rook g7, that's going to be checkmate very soon because the rooks cannot come to guard that bishop is actually dominating the board. So here we have king c8, the best defense, rook f7, and the end is near. Let me demonstrate. Beautiful move next, rook b4. We're threatening bishop e6 and our favorite rook b8. So the king tried to defend bishop c4. Once again, we don't want black to give us a check. The king moves. Finally, you give a check. And we have a checkmate as the next move. If the rook retreats, you just take it and that's game over. So, very important on rook d3, the winning move is bishop d5. And that's what we call a wooden shield, right? Because that looks like a wooden shield if you were to put all the arrows. So with the bishop on d5 and the rook on d3, black is losing over here. So that is what you should remember in order to win this end game. Let's see some more end games. And now we're moving to a rook end game. This is a very famous position. Lucena, how do you win? You give a check, the king goes away, and now you do the bridge. That's how you're gonna intercept the checks and win on the fourth rank. So let's see how that happens. Check, the king moves, check, the king moves, check, check, and now rook f4. And this is winning no matter what you do. White will promote. Keep in mind though, in the beginning, you don't want the king over here to be too close to the pawn. So you start with a check first, and when the king is far away, you build your bridge. That's simple, but very important to win rook and games. Let's see more examples. And this is another uh, a position known as a feeder position. And here, because we don't have the king in front of the pawn, and black is defending the square where the pawn will promote, we only have a draw despite being up a pawn with white. So that's the best try and black has to play rook e1. Now the king comes here and you have to avoid checkmate because if you don't move your king, rook b8 was coming. And now you move your king on g7 and if black, white try to do rook e8, you simply wait like that and now you're gonna be able to give some checks. So very important, you have some checks and you can continue to give some checks. So this position here is a draw and if you were to do e6, then you can give tons of checks and you can never win this position with white because the king has no way to escape all the checks. So anyway, that was an important position to remember. Rookie one, a very important move in order to save the position. And in this position, this is black to play, but white is about to promote. So is it a draw or is it a win? Well, the answer is it's a win for black. And the way we do it, we give checks. We keep coming close to the king and the pawn. We give check. Now the king has to stay with the pawn, not to lose the b7 pawn. And now we bring the king closer. Now, once again, we give a check. And only now we bring the king closer. Again, white is desperately trying to promote. We defend the promotion. We give a check. We come closer. 
and finally over here we finish with a nice checkmate so that's very important that in this case you can win however in our last position with the C pawn is only a draw we give a check we come here and now the technique was to give a check but here the king escape on the a8 and if you take the pawn it is simply stalemate so remember again the c pawn is only a draw but with against the b pawn black would win and after seeing a few classic end games and checkmates i will leave it at that please leave in the comments if you'd like to see more endgame techniques or other videos on this channel and i'll see you in the next one